What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, <laughs> well, today I uh, I did something I honestly didn't think I was going to do for a while. I've been talking about buying a motorcycle for quite a while, and I figured what better place to buy a motorcycle from than the salvage auction, right? It makes sense, especially since I have never ridden a bike before. Okay, I've ridden a bicycle. I've never ridden a motorcycle. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to ride other than I watched a couple short YouTube videos that claim to teach you to ride a motorcycle in five minutes. Uh, this motorcycle that I bought was a theft recovery. It's a 2014 KTM 690 Duke. And I have been hearing from a lot of people that uh, this bike is too powerful to learn on. I don't know, guys. Um, the, you guys may be right, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Now, the interesting thing about this bike is it has no keys. None. We don't know if it runs. We don't know if it doesn't. It's got 13,000 miles on it. I want it for $2,600, 32 out the door. But before we get into the bike, I have to run to Harbor Freight. I figured I'd show you guys the pond. You guys seem to really enjoy seeing the pond. The stream is flowing nicely. The koi are doing fantastic. You can see they are very, very, very happy. Look at these little guys, man. They are, uh, they are so happy. The water is clear. You can actually see to the bottom. You can see the rocks. The fish are doing very, very well. And I've been working on this daggum swimming pool for, uh, well, it's been a week or so now since I started with back flushing and rinsing and lots of shock treatment. But there is the pool, guys. It used to be green, and now it is a beautiful, beautiful crystal clear uh, uh, color. C crystal clear color? I don't know, but there it is. You can actually see to the bottom. And what I didn't realize about this pool is that the deep end is right here in the middle. The shallow end is right here. It drops down here significantly. And then it goes back up and you have kind of a shallow end over here as well. I have a ladder that I need to put in here. The skimmer is not functioning. I'm going to have to figure that out. And for all of the crap on the bottom of the pool there, I bought a robot. It's a dolphin something or other. Dolphin Polara Sinclair. I don't know. I uh, bought a dolphin robot that is supposed to clean my pool for me goes on the bottom, cleans the bottom, cleans the leaves, cleans all the fine particles, and climbs the walls, and cleans the uh, the water line, as well as supposedly it can climb steps too. It was twelve hundred bucks, so we're going to uh, we're going to come back for sure, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys the robot cleaning the pool because the bottom of the pool is very nasty. So before we get out of here, we got to stop at Harbor Freight. I have no way of transporting this motorcycle, as my grandpa would call it. I have no way of transporting this bike. Um, Harbor Freight sells a uh, like a hitch based something. I don't know. It plugs into the trailer hitch of my truck, and I can supposedly push the bike up on it, lock it down, and then we're going to take it to a KTM dealer and we're going to see if they can cut us a new key and find out if this bike runs. Now, let's get to Harbor Freight and let's get this new doohickey to put the bike on the truck. All right, boys, we're about to head over to Insurance Auto Auctions here in Oklahoma City. And this is what I bought and I had to buy some tools. I thought, <laughs> my mistake, I bought this from Harbor Freight for like 150 bucks and I thought that it came like pre-assembled you just throw it on your car and it didn't it came in a box you know i should have known better but anyway i bought me a little cheapo tool set down here and some vice grips we got it all put together we've got it installed this is the ramp for the bike to ride up the ramp attaches over here bike rolls up and on i guess you pin the tire somewhere in between these to make it fit the back tire gets clamped down with these clamps and then, of course, you use a couple straps, really strap it down, and it snaps into your, uh, to your truck's receiver hitch. This should be fun. Uh, it's got a 400-pound limit. The bike weighs 309 pounds dry. I think it'll be all right. All right, guys, we made it to IAA, and there's the bike dangling from a, from a rope. Oh, boy. Remember, I've never bought a bike before, so... Uh, this is my first time. I'm not quite sure how, uh, 
<laughs> I'm not sure how this works or how we're gonna get it up on the uh, back of the truck here. We're gonna figure that out though. I think I'm just gonna have him drop it on the ground here right by me. And we'll probably just try to ramp that thing up, see how that goes. And there she is, dangling by a string, man. Here we go. She's coming down. Down you go, old girl. Uh, she's only supposed to weigh 300 pounds, so it shouldn't be too bad. Slip these, slip these off. Yeah. There we go. Take these off and uh, give these back to him. And we can focus on loading this bad boy up. All right, guys, so there is your first look, the 2014 KTM 690. Uh, again, you guys know I know nothing about motorcycles, but I've been hearing from a lot of people I probably spent too much money um, and I bought too big of a bike to learn how to ride on. But I mean, it is what it is, man. There it is, we bought it, we own it. I'm sure the battery's dead. There are no keys, as you can see. Oh, looks like somebody broke the ignition. We may actually be able to turn this on with a screwdriver. If that's the case, we don't need to go to the dealer. Um, there she is. I don't see any real damage. You guys look at it and tell me what you think. Nice looking tires. I believe those are Michelins. Yeah, Michelin on the front. And what do we got on the back? Uh, Michelin on the back as well. Tires look pretty good to me. She's dirty. I think she'll clean up nice though. There it is, guys. Tell me what you think. I don't think it's got any aftermarket parts on it. Everything looks pretty dang stock to me. Let me uh, see. I don't know how none of this works, guys. None of it, like none of it. I know that this is a brake. This is your kill switch. I know that this is the clutch and I know that this makes it go fast. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's got a phone holder too. All right. Yeah, let me uh, fiddle with this a little bit, guys, and uh, let's see what we can do. I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not, but uh, I wrapped a strap around the seat, kind of sucked it down a little bit. We got the front wheel to fit perfectly in here where we put a pin over it so the wheel cannot pop out. We got these locked down holding the wheel. The problem is the back end, uh, <laughs> They really wanted the back wheel to do the same. It was supposed to fall into this groove where it was nice and secured in here and you put a pin through it or two uh, to secure the back end. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, the wheel did not fit. Um, so hopefully while we're bouncing, it's not gonna slide in there. I don't think it will. There seems to be quite a bit of slack on that chain there. Um, I don't know guys, it's on there. I guess the only thing we can do now uh, is go down to KTM and see what they can do about this uh, broken ignition. And the gas cap has also been broken out of it as well. Gas cap is just kind of sitting on there, man. Um, that ignition though, I don't know. We'll just have to go talk to them and see what they think. I tried putting a screwdriver in it, didn't do any good. So uh, yeah, let's just go down to the dealer and let's ask them what they think. Oh, look at this, man, we got some Brimbos. Got some Brembo's on the front there. Oh boy. All right, wish us luck. Let's get on the road. All right, so I know I could have made it more entertaining by recording getting it on and off the trailer, but no, we're not gonna do that. I'm I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a real trailer if I'm gonna be doing anything with bikes in the future. That was sketchy, I'll never do it again. Well, I'll never say never. I hope that I never have to do it again. So I took this to uh, a KTM dealer locally called Ajax. The guy took a look at it and said, wow, your bike's kind of beat up, man. I was like, damn, that, uh, <laughs> that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. I was like, well, I mean, I paid $3,200 for it and I don't even know if it runs. Um, unfortunately, they told me that as far as getting the ignition replaced and everything, they're six weeks behind. 
So there's no way. I'm not waiting six weeks. Like, I would like to know today. Obviously, this bike used to have decals on it. Somebody ripped those off. The gas cap is gone. It, well, flew off somewhere and we have to replace the whole gas cap so what i found on ebay for a 2014 ktm 690 duke uh the entire ignition the entire gas cap and this seat has a lock but somebody popped it the lock is actually right there so when it was stolen they popped that lock too um so it comes with a new lock the new cable that runs all the way up here new ignition new gas cap all these things are keyed we can get to it enough to get to the battery down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a jump on it and let's see if we can get it to do anything. All right, so I am not having any luck getting a screwdriver down in there. Turns out this piece right here, this just pops off. There's nothing even holding it on. Just take that off and uh, well, looky here. Here we have the ignition, the tumbler. The issue we have is right here, these are those tamper-proof bolts the head snaps off of them once you get them tightened to proper torque. The head snaps off so you can never, ever again take them off. But with a good pair of, of vice grips, you should be able to you should be able to lock those suckers on there. I hope I'm not teaching anybody how to steal a bike, because that's not my intention. Anyway, let me let me let me stick this on here. Alright, just get your vice grips on there and give it a whirl, man. And uh do that for both of these and uh, eventually, the idea is this uh, retaining clip holding the ignition lock in place will come off. All right, so once we get those two tamper-proof screws out of there that comes off with some vice grips, this piece comes right out. At this point, it looks to me like this ignition should just kind of rock out right here, just like that, and it does. You can see it comes right off of there. Uh, the issue is it doesn't want to go any further. Um, there is a wire somewhere down here, so I'm going to have to do a little more research. Oh, someone cut the wires. They cut the wires off of the ignition. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, this makes things a little more interesting. I don't know if you can see, but there are, uh, right down there in that little hole right here, there are two wires, a green and a red, they have been cut, so obviously somebody has bypassed the ignition. I've got to find those wires. I have no idea where they'd be. And we're going to have to find those wires and splice them together, and hopefully then we can get it to do something. All right, so upon further inspection, looking around, trying to figure out, I knew since they bypassed the wires, they had to have spliced them somewhere, and right here under this, uh, here's your wires. That is how the thieves were able to get it going. So we haven't heard this thing run. We bought it sight unseen, listed as a non-runner. But take a look, guys. Um, we have signals, we have lights. So it looks like things are starting to come together. Kill switch is off. We have 14,849 miles. Wow. Boy, somebody, uh, somebody drove the hell out of this. Okay, so from here, I guess it's a matter of just cranking it up. Let me get these lights shut off and let's see if it'll fire on its own. All right, it's in neutral. We put a uh, jump starter on it. I'm hoping that it'll start without me having to put my... Uh... There she is. First start, guys. She runs. Oh, you guys know it's on now. I am in so much trouble. Yep, she runs. Oh boy, we've got a uh, we've got an ABS light. There it is, guys. No smoke, no knocks, no funny rattles, no nothing. All we've got is a low fuel light and a uh, and an ABS light, and that's it. I can't believe it. She should be able to run on her own now. Yeah, she's charging up real nice. Guys, I can't believe my first motorcycle, man. My first bike. 
Yeah, I don't know anything about it. All I know is she sounds good. And we're gonna have to take this thing out and, and see if it'll move under its own power. We don't know if the clutch is good yet. That still remains to be seen. So we've got Austin Carr with us today. Oh, I just showed up. <laughs> yeah, he just showed up. He just showed up, man. He wants to check out the BMW, so I'm gonna take him and go look at that here in a minute. But I figure first, uh, we've gone almost as far as we can with this video. I mean, that we bought it, we picked it up in a very sketchy manner and somehow made it to the dealership. Uh, dealership didn't have time for it, so we made it home and we figured out how to make it run. So we know that it runs. Now we need to know, can someone that's never ridden a motorcycle before get on this and actually ride it? Now I'm gonna spoil it for you. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. I'm gonna make you guys watch. I'm gonna give Austin yeah. the camera and I am going to very carefully, very slowly make my way in a circle once or twice on this bike um i i honestly it's it's kind of heavy um which is what everybody told me everybody told me it's it's a big bike for a beginner i should have gone with a 250 but what i try to explain to everybody on social media is you don't get to choose what these places have to offer you know what i mean you can only choose from what they have available and this is what they had available and i thought you know what i like it it's a good looking bike um i will definitely agree that it's probably too big and probably too powerful for a beginner but um you know what the heck what the heck man um let's fire it up and let's see if i you know fall over or whatever if i do it's, it's no big deal like i'm not going to take it out of the video um we'll go ahead and leave it so i'm going to hand the camera to austin and uh wish me luck man let me hot wire my uh it's like getting on a horse man it's my hog it's, it's my hog and the gas fumes coming out of the gas tank are are really nice um that really helps all right man let me back up i'm gonna I'm gonna come over here. <sighs> people go, I, I can already see it. Like all I did is get on the bike and people are already gonna be like, you did that wrong, Randy. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where, there's neutral right there. All right, I've got the clutch in. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Now, one down. That's in first gear, buddy. That's in second gear. I don't know how many gears this damn thing's got, but we're gonna we're gonna leave it down in first, just like that. All right. I'm gonna fall. I gotta remember how to use the brakes too, man. All right, gentle on the clutch, gentle, gentle. I would do it one more time, one more time, one more, because I'm I'm feeling risky. I got my leather jacket on, man. I'm 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 ready. All right, here we go. You ready? Gentle on the clutch. There we go. Woo! Yee yee! <laughs> Hey, I done did the thing. I done did the thing, man. <laughs> How about that? Now the, the next level is getting it on the road, right? Or are we still staying in the field? Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to get her on the road, man. I'm a, I'm a little scared for that. No. Um, I think, you know what I really should do? Do you, you, you Heritage Park Mall? Oh yeah, I know here. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got the idea because I was driving yesterday or whatever, and I saw somebody learning how to drive 
or ride a motorcycle over there at the Heritage Park Mall parking lot. Probably a good idea. And I think that nice open straightaways to, to really get you, because all I'm doing, it's easy to get in first gear. Yeah. You know, it's like driving a stick shift car in first gear. Yeah, That's easy. easy. Yep. The thing is, is clutch and shift and clutch and shift. Yep. That's where things can get a little bit tricky. And uh, you got to be real. You don't really need much throttle on this to get no. going. Just the clutch. Okay, I'll spoil it for you guys. I already rode around in a circle three or four times. I fell twice. <laughs> and and I, I know I could have I could have kept it. You know what? I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm just going to leave that alone. Anyway, starting out on this bike, um, I think the main thing to remember is clutch. Very gentle in first gear. Very ever so easy. Like in a car, you kind of want to dump the clutch. You just ease it. You want to try it? Uh, you want to do it? No. I'm, oh, come I'm on, good. Austin. No, no, Everybody's no. watching. Uh, no. Come on, man. See, I'm probably more of a beginner than Randy. I have a fear I've never ridden a bike before. <laughs> Uh, and I'm also kind of afraid of them. So, and I sat on this one. I'm intimidated by it already. It, it is a, it's a little heavy. Bike. It's a little it's heavy. Pretty heavy. Yeah, I'm, imagine what one of those big Harleys is like, man. You I know what I mean? I don't know how people do it. I don't either. I don't know. I got a buddy. Uh, you guys may remember Tim from um, uh, the muffler shop. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah he, he's been riding his whole life. Hmm. So, Tim got a hold of me when he saw I bought a bike. He said, God, Randy, please call me. <laughs> he did. He he said he said seriously, please call me, and I'll help teach you how to ride the bike. And I'm like, yeah, I appreciate that for sure. And Tim, if you see the video and you're like, but you didn't call me, I'll probably get a hold of you, man, for sure. But this is it's one of those things. I want to do it on my own. You know what I mean? It's 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 uh, I. I I appreciate the offers and I probably will get him to help me yeah. understand things a little better and ride safer. But uh, there's something to be said when you learn how to do it on your own. You know, it's like it's like riding a horse a and falling more, off. More gratification. Yeah. That's that's how I feel anyway. Guys, I think that's going to be about it for the video. I mean, we did everything we set out to do. We found a bike, we bought it. Like I said, it was 20. The thing that got me was the fees, and I'm not talking bad about IA at all. Like not not at all. It's just it kind of surprised me. The bike was 20 uh 2400. They countered me at 26. And I was like, "Do I really want to risk having them relist it and go in another week or I could I could get that content right now?" For 200 extra dollars i'll pay the 200 dollars. and then when i saw the the total cost was 32 i was just i, I was kind of surprised i don't know if it's because it was a it wasn't through normal ia this was through rec rec, rec rides hmm. like recreational rides it's a different kind of of deal through them or whatever maybe the fees are higher for that i'm not sure i did email them to ask like uh you know just to get a general understanding of the fee structure or whatever but e either way i feel like for three grand for $3,200 out the door, I have a 2014, uh, what is this again? It's a it's a KTM 690 Duke. Hmm. And I got it for $3,200, man. And, you know, it needs the ignition and a gas cap and a couple other little odds and ends. But from what I can tell, she runs. Seems like a pretty solid she, bike. She drives. You just got to, you know what we'll do? We'll come back in the next video. We'll clean it up. I'll bring some degreaser and stuff, and uh, we'll come out here really clean it up. And uh, maybe we'll even put a motorcycle tag on it. Oh. Hey, I got to get my motorcycle license if I want to be out riding this thing legit. So I can only practice in this backyard so long. There's only so much backyard. And there's only so much backyard. And I'm only turning one direction. I got, I got a lot to learn, man. Oh. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. This is fun. And, and the reason I, I, I bought the bike and got away from cars is because I'm bored with cars. I've just, I've been cars 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 i'm just like uh, well we by the way i did win something else just now i just got the confirmation from copart that i won something else guys so stay tuned for that it's an it's another car but it's not something that you see every day um sugar what are you doing out oh, here hey. what are you doing out here so anyway ladies and gentlemen we've got the bike and it's new content and you get to watch me learn as i go yeah it, it, i don't think it gets much better than that man i actually had a lot of fun making this video today shout out to austin for coming over because i didn't have anybody even to hold the camera for me hey, man 
I was able to come by. I'm yeah, here. so <laughs> now I can show you the uh, now I can show you the Beamer. Let's go look at the Beamer. Out. All right, guys, like the video if you enjoyed the content. Dislike it if you didn't. Please drop your comments. I'm dying to see your comments. Comment below. I want to see what you're thinking and, and, and how you're feeling about yeah, you may be getting into some bikes on the channel while we're at it. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch you all very soon in the next one.